says I should skip those steps because they're complicated. We are ready, thank you. Okay. We'll call the meeting to order. Okay, um, we'll get a motion to approve the agenda. Anybody? Motion to I'll approve. Did we wanna find out why we're not going out to see the Edith and yeah. If we can have some I'm discussion sorry, about that. Edith Ann Award properties. Sure. Is item 5.1. So when I was setting the agendas for the upcoming meetings, this meeting was going to be pretty heavy. It was going to have four public hearings. So since that time, we've scheduled two special meetings since then. Um, having people here for public hearings and then leaving the site felt kind of cumbersome. So since we have the special meetings coming up, things have been bumped to August 30th and September 6th. If you'd like to go tour the properties, I'm more than willing to tonight, but it felt cumbersome if people were coming to the meeting tonight. So it, would the expectation be then we would make a decision without touring the properties? So I took photos and then suggested in the memo that you right, try to stop by. Them. Right. Okay, so we should talk, I guess, right? Yes. Who's, who would need to see them yet, the properties? Uh, I have none. Okay. Um, I was able to do it on my free time. And I was as well. So was I. Same. Okay. Okay. So then you guys can vote. With that? Then you guys can vote. Okay. I'll just abstain. That's fine. Sure. Are you comfortable with that? I'm totally comfortable okay. with that. Okay. So I would say typically when we've done this before, we've always had that be at the very end of the agenda. Okay. And then we just have gone and done that and yeah, then voted I, and I adjourned. figured it might be long tonight that it might have been. Sure. But we can, right. if we're all in agreement, we'll just go with that. Okay. Um, any further discussion? No. Nope, I make a motion to approve the agenda. I think there's already a motion on the floor, oh. Madam Chair. Sorry. I'll second it then. Okay. Those opposed? Motion carried. Then we'll move on to number item number three, approval of the minutes. I'll file a motion to approve the July 19 minutes. Second. Any comments? Discussion? Mm -mm. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. And then item number four. Thanks. Public hearing. All right, so tonight the first order, the first agenda item is the Edith Ann Award. A little bit of history about the award. It began in 2015 to recognize property owners that strive for property excellence. So it generally is in the form of landscaping and lawn care. The award honors the work of Edith Herman and Ann Neals, who are active in the Carver in the Minnesota project. And it recognizes people who contribute to the beauty of Carver. Previous winners of the award include Andy and Natalie Seberg and Bridget Kelly. There were four properties this year that were nominated. So when I reached out to them, two of the property owners got back to me that were interested for consideration. So we'll review the two properties. Tonight, the Planning Commission will vote, and then it will be forwarded on to the City Council to present a plaque and the yard sign that you see around town on the, at the September 4th meeting. So the first property for consideration is 720 Debbie Court. Both of the nominees are named Karen, so it might get a little bit confusing, but I will try to keep them separate. So. Uh, Karen and her family have lived at 720 Debbie Court for 17 years. They largely started their project as a living wall for a little bit of privacy as you turn a corner. And something that was really interesting that Karen said is that she calls her yard the neighborhood plant junkyard. So it's often when she sees her neighbors pulling things out, she goes and grabs them and adds them to her garden. Something else that was really cool that Karen mentioned was that everything in her yard is dividable. So if people are interested in something, they should absolutely stop by, see if she's around, and she'd be happy to divide any of her plants. The advice for novice gardeners is that gardening is not as hard as it looks, and it should be fun and rewarding. 
So some photos of the property at 720 Debbie. So this is, these are photos of the living wall. It's massive, it's beautiful. She does a really nice job keeping it up. Karen was kind enough when me and the building official were in her yard to offer us some pears from her fruit tree and she has a really tranquil yard. She has also a koi pond that was built as part of a Boy Scout project. So if you haven't seen the living wall at 720 W Lane, I absolutely would suggest it. It is fantastic and beautiful. Her yard is home to many bees, butterflies, and uh, though it's not something commonly people want in their garden, but she keeps milkweed to keep monarchs and pollinators happy. So it's really beautiful, really well maintained. The second property is 429 Ramsey Avenue. Again, Karen and her family have lived on the property for 11 years. Karen mentioned that her husband fell in love with the floor plan of the house, but she fell in love with the gardens. So they lived up the street for two years, but when this house came up for sale, it was kind of a no-brainer for her that she wanted to get her hands on it. So she describes her garden as happy, whimsical, and messy. And she said anecdotally that she often doesn't know what she's doing, but I think the pictures prove otherwise pretty quickly. Uh, but she does love sp spending time in her garden. Her yard too is bird, bee, and butterfly friendly. She mentioned that birding has become an avid hobby for her family. She also credited her husband and her son Jack for their hard work on the yard. And her advice for keeping rabbits at bay is to get a dog. They have a Springer Spaniel named Mojo that if a rabbit enters the yard to try to chew on any of her plants, he pretty quickly chases them away. So some photos from 429 Ramsey. Again, it's a large swath of plantings and they are beautiful. The colors are really vivid. She does a really fantastic job. And if she calls that messy, I would happily invite her over to my yard to make my yard look a little messy too. Do you have any questions about the two properties? I don't have any questions about the properties, maybe more about how we're going to move forward, I guess. Sure. With so the if the four of you are comfortable with voting, uh, you could entertain a motion for one or the other. It's kind of a bummer that there's only two, that there's just one person that can get chosen. But again, four were nominated, two decided to move forward with the project. So, Madam Chair, are we able to have some discussion and comments? Yeah. I think that would be great because, I mean, I would say prior we always had kind of a list mm -hmm. of things that we went through um, and then had a numerical system mm -hmm. that helped guide us, that I recall. Great. Yeah, Madam Chair, I'd be curious to know kind of what the criteria is and the idea of if there's a scoring or ranking right. sounds very so. fair. Um, I looked at the pictures and both of them curbside appeal, <laughs> you know, Agree. hard to decide, not knowing enough yet on kind of the criteria. The one thing I really, when I looked at the Ramsey Avenue versus Debbie Lane, I really liked that the Debbie Lane considered themselves the neighborhood plant junkyard and often takes plants that are thrown away. It just seemed like a little more of a uh, community effort and you know, as environmental as a person could be in, you know, replenishing their garden. Um, I lean towards that, but I would like to hear more about criteria. If I had some criteria, I would give it to you, but I don't. This is my first year doing it, so we don't have a ton of, I personally don't have a ton of history on it. Sure. You want to add yeah, something? I think historically, and I think a lot of you, well, couple of you up there have done it in the three of you have done it in the past I think it's just curb appeal what looks nice these are folks who obviously spend in both instances a lot of time out in their yards and just kind of a it's almost a beauty contest if you will who's got the prettiest gardens and the most you right. know. I mean in the past we've had like before and after photos too you know if if they've done improvements that way I mean this does not seem to be the case this is truly right. really like a huge investment on their end that they maintain because that's their value system of what they seem to be, you know. And I think really the length important. of time that they both have been working on their gardens, I don't suspect that they have many before photos. They might, but that, was, that wasn't something that I have. I do think it would add some value if we had it, like a consistent way of doing it, though, for future. Yes, that's absolutely fair. You know, future purposes. Okay. 
um, so we can talk about if we're comfortable, you know, emotionally winging it based off of curb appeal and some history that goes with it, or if, or, or if we're not. Madam Chair, I'm totally that. comfortable with that. Um, if I could make a couple comments. Um, I think in going out and looking at the different yards, um, you know, there, anybody's a winner. They're all winners. The, the yards are absolutely beautiful. What I love about both these nominees is that um, the spaces that they're creating aren't just visually pleasing, but they, um, they are pollinator gardens. They're attracting the bees and the the butterflies and, and the birds, and those are good things for the environment and sustainability. I also saw a lot of native plantings, um, which is good for um, our sustainabil sustainability footprint, the environment as well. Um, but I love the fact that they were both pollinator gardens, that they both were beautiful. Um, and and for, for me, um, the Debbie Lane uh, yard, the living fence was spectacular. Um, it, it's a really creative way to have plantings um, serve as a visually pleasing kind of barrier, so to speak. Not necessarily barrier, but um, maybe a better word for that. But um, certainly is nice, boundary, and then a boundary, um, and then the pollinator-friendly piece. It just took things in my mind to to the next a level. Different level, sure. Mm -hmm. Um, both beautiful gardens, it's definitely difficult to choose, um, but if we were, if we're looking to entertain motions, um, I would make a motion for, um, 720 Debbie Lane and the Brinkman family, uh, to, um, be awarded the, the award this year. I agree with those comments, and I would reinforce and really like the idea that it's given the perception of it's a neighborhood concept of there's a plant you just don't know what to do with or take care of somewhere else to put it <laughs> right so the community aspect of exactly and then yep. giving back like splitting up plants and whatnot exactly yep yeah thank you for mentioning that yeah not just the giving the plants but then splitting them and giving them back so i just feel like that's a good Community engagement um, is, it's hard to tell the difference, but that's something that sticks out to me on the uh, uh, 720 Debbie Lane property. Um, well, I think we can go ahead and ask for a second to the motion. If you have any comments or thoughts? No, I think overall, uh, I'm not much of a gardener myself, but very, both properties had very good curb appeal. Um, you can definitely tell that there was a lot of time and effort that was put into the by the uh, the homeowners and the gardens. So, if we're at that stage, I would like to make a second uh, on the motion. Okay, I think we can do that. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then when a stain, how do we say that in our voting? Okay. So I'll abstain. Okay. And did you want to add any comments, Joy, at all from the process? No, I have a couple I, comments you know, if we can move I, to that I point. Read, I read the note, and I'll be honest, it said, you know, we recommend that you swing by. And the recommendation was not a, we're going to vote on this. You right. should go look at it. Right, right, right. So I did, I took it as a suggestion. Sure. So I miss interpreted that and should have made time no problem i think this moving forward too i mean and i'd be glad to have assist with this as, mm -hmm. as having a little bit more structured criteria if mm -hmm. we're going to own this piece of it because um, even in years past you know we've kind of waffled like how do we fit in with with this right. and doing it justice um, and we want to i think our hearts are all there it's just kind of coming up with some structured criteria to, to do it consistently Yep. So that everybody who is involved in it feels, you know, really confident about the process. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Thanks for bearing through it with me. Great. Okay. Um, moving on to 5.2. 
So maybe the lesser fun of the two agenda items tonight. There's a pretty technical floodplain ordinance in your packet. So the city of Car Carver participates in the National Flood Insurance Program, or NFIP, that's administered through FEMA. And that's a way to provide flood insurance for property owners, renters, and businesses. It's an effort to mitigate effects of flooding on structures. It's really technical. I was reading through portions of it and got a little turned around. So if you felt overwhelmed by it, thank you for trying. I really appreciate it. Um, but something that is fantastic is that the city of Carver had a template that was sent to us that we can cater to make it our own. So they highlighted portions that we need to change that are really specific to Carver. So you might be asking, why are we changing this technical floodplain ordinance? FEMA has been working on updated flood maps, and they'll be effective December 21st, 2018, and our city code needs to match those maps. We need to say as part of our code, we're adopting the new maps and have our language also speak to them. And there have been several updates since the previous version, both by FEMA and then to comply with state and federal laws. The update to the ordinance will allow the city of Carver to continue in the National Flood Insurance Program. So to stay part of that program, we do need to adopt the ordinance. And the existing floodplain ordinance that is in our current city code was drafted in 1997. So in the terms of city code, that's not terribly old, but a lot has changed since then with some flooding information based on FEMA, state law, and local. So the ordinance is really technical, but again, Staff does feel like the template that was provided is adequate, feels almost like an expert wrote it for us, that we can interchange some inter information. So tonight it's just a discussion, not asking you to have any formal action on it. If there are questions, comments, concerns, things you think need to be changed based on the ordinance, I will happily entertain any and all. I have a question. Are the maps distinctively different than the ones that were incorporated with the 1997 ordinance? Not terribly. Um, Mark Postalco, the building official, did quite a bit of review on the maps, so he was able to go back and forth with FEMA to say, this looks a little different, I'm not comfortable with where the lines are drawn. So they're not terribly different, and we did have an opportunity to comment on the maps. Okay, so do we expect that any homeowners or residents are going to be impacted by this ordinance? just that they will be able to continue with their insurance. It won't change like if someone is allowed to be part of the program or not. Okay, and then from an ordinance standpoint, since I don't have a copy of the 1997 ordinance, are there any differences regarding uses, permitted uses, those sorts of things? So the proposed ordinance is a bit more specific. It lays it out a bit. I don't wanna say better, but more specifically. We get quite a few questions at a staff level saying, I'm in the flood zone, what does this mean? And this gives us a greater tool to be able to say, hey, we have this ordinance online, I would be happy to forward it to you for your permitted uses. So it doesn't drastically change to say a single family home can't be used as a single family home. I think it lays it out in a cleaner and clearer way. So just along those lines, do we expect any um, current uses of property to be not in compliance with the ordinance? No, and if they are, they're grandfathered in. So if someone had a house and that's too close to the property line and we update our residential zoning district, that house is grandfathered in. We don't ever go and say, hey, you need to pick up your house and move it. So they can stay where they're at when the ordinance is adopted. Okay. And it wouldn't have a negative impact on their ability to get insurance? No, this would allow them to right. get the insurance. I mean, this needs to be updated in order to stay compliant with that. Correct, yes. Madam Chair. Question, uh, just to follow up on that, Erin. Um, when, if there come, let's just play out that scenario a little bit further. If there comes a time where a homeowner in that situation would want to make an improvement to their property, mm -hmm. is that when the ordinance um, would kick in and they would no longer be grandfathered? Correct. So if my house is too close to the property line and I want to go even closer, I wouldn't be permitted to, but I could keep my house where it is existing. The optional components in the ordinance in red that um, are those, okay, let's, let's go backwards. The, what's the rationale for adding those? Sure, so it largely, I think, cleans that up. So it adds a little bit of clarity in some of the places. Some of the definitions are also optional. So I suspect that some cities have a pretty robust 
flood section that they'll keep their definitions. Ours is not probably the beefiest, so adding some of those things that are referenced later in the ordinance is important. Okay, and we don't think that's going to negatively impact no, anybody. No, I don't believe so. It should assist in clarifying. Correct. So who who determined Dev? Who determines those to go in or out? We do. Okay. So if you have strong feelings about one, I'd be happy to s discuss it further. Sure. Just curious. I mean, there's not very many. No, there's not. Question just more about the process. Is this something we really have to be proactive about, or if we wouldn't have done anything, what would the default be? Sure. Would we have stayed the same? So if we don't update the ordinance, we fall out of the program. So Carver would no longer participate in the National Flood Insurance Program. So there's a, t there's a timeline for it. We need to have a draft to the DNR by the end of September. So this is your first review. We'll do the same review with council. No action needs to be taken by then, but they just need to start reviewing what we're working on. Madam Chair, I would just say the discussion has been helpful. Um, Aaron, as you mentioned, I thought it was very technical, so at times it was very difficult to follow and try to understand everything in here. But that being said, the questions that were raised here tonight were, um, were aligned with the questions that I had, and um, I'm comfortable with what's in here um, as it stands for now. So thank you. As it moves forward to council, mm -hmm. if we if we conclude our discussion, then you'll then you'll prepare a second draft, Correct. and it will come back through again. Yes, and that will be when I ask for action. Sure. And then, obviously, in the meantime, we can email any other concerns or thoughts that we have after I would tonight. Love that. Yep. Great. Okay. Any other thoughts or questions? Not for me, but it was nice to be able to have this discussion. Uh, when is the uh, final decision need to so be done on this? It needs to be effective by December 21st. Okay. So we have some time to get a draft ready, but based on this discussion and staff's review of the ordinance, I don't foresee we're going to be removing any huge parts of the ordinance. I just have a kind of random question. As far as participating in the program, mm -hmm. the National Flood Insurance Program, how long have we been doing that? Oof, that's a, a, good a long question. time? Like um, before so the 97 ordinance was created that we're yes. working off of? I would have to believe that we wouldn't have an ordinance if there wasn't something to back it up. Okay. Will we be able to see the maps at the next review? Yes, they, uh, the maps are... They're not, we, the, we have old copies right now. They haven't incorporated our new comments, but I anticipate as we get closer to December, they'll have a final draft for us. Okay. Okay, we can move forward. Uh, communications. Could someone provide an update from yesterday's meeting? Sure. <laughs> so yesterday we had our design carver meeting. We reviewed an update to the future land use map that the group has been working towards. So um, that's available online if you want to check it out. I also have put out a survey monkey survey about the comp plan and I've had about 270 people take it, which is phenomenal for carver's population to have that many people engaged. So we reviewed some of the survey results against the future land use map. Speaking directly to like one of the most wanted things in Carver is more commercial retail services. So how does our future land use map mirror that? And that's generally through guiding more property for commercial, industrial, that flex zone that will allow offices. So we paired those two things together, the survey and the future land use map to make sure that we were hitting topics that we felt were important to the 270 people that took the survey. We also reviewed an updated parks and trails map that the Parks Commission has worked on. So it showed existing trails and then also future trails, also available online in the packet. 
And then we talked a little bit about search areas. So the Parks Commission has identified four distinct areas within the city of Carver and then west as we continue to grow as places that might have something unique. So if that's a lake or something with the big woods, something that we would like to target to keep our eye on um, and potentially purchase before the city gets there so we can get a lower cost and can develop there in the future. So forward thinking on a lot of the parks information. And a draft of the housing section was included in the packet. So we had a brief discussion about that. I bounced a ton of ideas off everyone for the open house that's next Wednesday, the 22nd, here at Church by the River, starting at 6.30, going until 8. So it was a lot of me saying crazy things that I've thought of that might be fun and exciting for people to see. And the group gave me some really good feedback to move forward with. Were there any recommended changes to the land use map based upon the survey? Not from the group, no. Does anyone want to add anything that we're at the meeting? No. The survey results were really fun to look at. And then um, I need to take the survey as well. Oh, please so do. I, I, will, I will be committed to doing that Thank now you. that I said it publicly. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean, I think I think the the amount of people that are doing it is really exciting, and so. I know you feel great about that. I do. You know, if we can really hit over like the 300 number, that'd be plus, would be great. Right, and something that was so cool about the survey is the last question was optional if you wanted to leave your email for me to blast you with a ton of information. And I have over 100 people that have said, hey, I'm interested, keep me posted. So I blasted the invite to them. Hopefully we'll get a good turnout at the open house next week. No, I think it's great work. Thank you. If I may, I might add something else. Sure. I just want to thank you all for being really flexible over the next couple of weeks. I've had two requests from three different developers asking for special meeting dates, and you being available is really important, and I appreciate it, and I understand how, how tough it can be to give up a night in the summer. So upcoming meetings, August 30th, that will be a review of Lakeview, so the industrial project by Fleet Farm. And we're going to take three actions on that likely. It'll be the rezoning, preliminary plat, and final plat. So we'll move through it slowly so everyone gets a really clear idea what we're approving as we approve it. And then at 6 o'clock, we're holding a neighborhood meeting for the Trident development, which is the redevelopment of the Lens and Bus Garage project. So 6 o'clock, I've sent out a mailer to property owners with 350 feet to have them come learn more about the project before it's formally at the Planning Commission. So I'll be there and members of the development team will also be there beginning at six. If you'd like to come and listen, please feel free. Otherwise, during the Planning Commission meeting, I'll give a brief overview. I suspect some of the neighbors, if, they're, if they wanna stick around, they will for the meeting. If there's no public hearing with a concept plan, but if you wanted to take comment, that's always an option. So that will be the August 30th meeting, September 6th. The request was from DR Horton. So they're moving two projects through in Carver right now. It's Meridian Fields, which is just south of Highway 212, uh, northwest of the elementary school. That project is in for final plat, so the last phase of the planning process. And then Hawthorne Ridge, which is the Redmond property. As you'll recall, we reviewed the concept plan previously. They're in for preliminary plat. So there, that's the meeting that will require the public hearing. So. People within 350 feet, again, have been noticed. It's running in the paper. So hopefully we'll get some people to come out and give you some discussion about the two projects. So September 6th, DR Horton specific, August 30th, Trident and Lakeview. Okay, can you, I'm sorry, I didn't realize the September 6th meeting was confirmed. What time? Uh, that one, so we'll start at 6.30 with two public, one public hearing, just one. I have a couple questions sure um, on the uh, I think it's the DH Horton DR Horton DR Horton. Horton thank you um, what's the definition of 350 feet <laughs> sure <laughs> only so, yeah I don't generate it it's done on our GIS so it's from every outside property line so it's not from like the center of the site 
and it does cross roadways, waterways, open space. So if you are in 350 feet of any property line, you're noticed. So from the center of the property? No, no any outside road. property line. Oh, from the, like the perimeter, the outside of it. Correct. If you are within 350 feet. From yes. any side. From any side, okay. And that's set by state statute. Okay, because I have some questions about that. Um, and then the um, Hawthorne, mm -hmm. is that, the, is there one name for, can, to me it's like two mini neighborhoods just because sure. of the roads. Mm -hmm. But it's one name for the two little developments. It is, yes. Okay. But that's a good point. I hadn't thought about it that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be nice to, you know, maybe just internally we need something to separate the two. Right, even if it's north-south maybe. Exactly. Or Ironwood and Aspen for the street names. I'll think about that. I'm sure their marketing team will. I know. <laughs> something that is true. They have one of those. I do not. <laughs> and then we'll still plan to have the uh, regularly scheduled planning commission on the meeting on the 20th. That is currently anticipated. Um, are we going to continue having the 2040 comprehensive plan meetings? Yes. Do you know when those will start up again? There will be one likely in late September. The city engineer will be carrying the weight of that meeting. It'll be water resources and transportation. So I can check with him and get that date out. Okay. Sounds like we'll be seeing a lot of you in September. I know, it's been really exciting. We have a lot of really fun stuff happening. So thank you again for giving me so many of your evenings. Really busy time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, can I get a motion to adjourn? A motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.